Growing in Christ Day 30 Truth on Trial The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Matthew chapter 26 verses 63-64 Before the Jewish courts of elders It's daybreak and Jesus has been brought before the Sanhedrin, powerful religious leaders. The high priest, Caiaphas doesn't even pretend to hold a fair court. Or does he mask his hatred for the Lord? Is desperately clawing for the tiniest speck of the evidence against Jesus so he can put him to death? But so far, he can't find any. He consorts with sinners and tax collectors, someone yells in the crowd that has gathered in Caiaphas' place. The high priest stared blankly, as if to dismiss the charge. He breaks the Sabbath law, another chimes in, and still another speaks up. He claims he can forgive sins. Noted, noted, noted. Sapphias raises his voice in the procedural scorn. We've heard all of this before, and none of it warrant execution. Who brings against the defendant witness concerning a, a capital crime, an offense deserving death? Suddenly, some in the room stand up and give false testimony against Jesus. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days will build another, not made with hands. Yet even their testimony does not agree. The high priest raises to his feet and glares at Jesus. Are you not going to answer? He thunders. What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? Jesus remains silent. Sapphire grows impatient. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus finally answers. Yes, it is as you say. The priest tears his clothes and accuses Jesus of speaking blasphemy. The other officials agree. He is bursted to death. They spit in Jesus' face and strike him with their fists. Let's explore together the word from Matthew chapter 26. Imagine how alone Jesus must have left. His friends doubted, even betrayed him. The very people he came to save spit on his face. It never occurred to anyone that chilly money that Christ cleans just might be true, even though they had seen and witnessed his miracles, and despite the fact that they were marveled at his teachings, those who put Jesus on trial were spiritually blind. They refused to see the truth. Still, two comforting facts emerge from today's hostile scene. Jesus is who he claims to be. Therefore, we must acknowledge that He is the Lord and give Him the glory and honor He deserves. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3 tells us, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, staining all things by His powerful word. And Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus proves that He loves us wildly. He loves us despite our mixed up hearts. He loves us when we shake our fist at him and spit in his face. He loves us no matter what. He loves us so much. He hurts when we hurt. God's love is something no one can fully grasp and because of it, he forgives our sins through Jesus Christ and graciously brings us back into fellowship with him, abandoning his unholy, imperfect children is unthinkable to God, just as it was unheard of the father of the prodigal son. It is this radical love that took him to the cross. Fear the Lord and honor his holy name. There are reasons Christ followers cringe when the world uses the Lord's name in vain. According to the scripture, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9.10 John fell to his feet when God spoke to him. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 Paul dropped to the ground when he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. Act 9 4 
Moses trembled when God spoke to him. Acts 7.32 Now contrast this act of reverence with their hateful behavior of Sophia, Sanhedrin, and the Roman guards. Are you cringing yet? Consider how your own disobedience is like a slap in the face to our Holy Lord. What must we do to nurture a right relationship with Jesus? Remember, God is faithful. In the Lord's perfect time, He gives a new beginning to people who so easily turn their back on Him. Rebellious children who break promises, generations that know more than a little about disobedience. People like you and me. If today's study hasn't convinced you, turn to the book of Judge for more proof. It's filled with snapshots and snapshots of raw, uncensored rebelliousness and God's gracious divine deliverance. As it's written in Judges chapter 2 verse 11, Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served their bowels. Keep reading and you'll discover that despite humankind's gross unfaithfulness, God is faithful. He molds and disciplines His children. He shows persistence, unwearing love, and matchless grace, grace that absolutely undeserved. List some ways that the Lord has been faithful in your life. Was there a time when His forgiveness seemed too good to be true? Something you had a difficult time believing and accepting? Explain your answer. Now let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I can find comfort in the fact that you will never turn your back on me. I ask you, my Lord, show me how to lean on an old familiar truth which is written on Psalm 46 verses 10 to 11. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen.